Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, today we're going to make a gearbox and uh, who knows maybe something more if we have time. I don't know. So, here lately I haven't had a lot of time for making videos to be honest with you other than uh, I did take a little trip with a 360 degree camera and it was just as disappointing as the first video as, as far as uh, you know being all blurry and I've come to to learn from reading about it you can't expect much from these 360 degree cameras they just don't have enough pixels to show the whole world all around them I shoot th with a thing in 4k which should be plenty of resolution for most things but uh, I guess what they need is about 24k resolution to, to really make things look clear at least the one I've got needs that <laughs> all right and I, I'm also on the uh, channel improvement project here uh, I guess I don't really adequately explain a lot of things that I do and so I noticed that especially in the motorcycle crankshaft rebuilding video there seemed to be a lot of people that didn't understand what I was doing and uh, so I must not have done a very good job of explaining but in that video I had a junk crankshaft. The centers in the end that you would normally use to true the thing up with, the center on one end was ruined. It was the oil input shaft for, uh, path for that uh, crankshaft and it got damaged and was no longer a good center and no longer capable of delivering oil you know, to the crankshaft bearings. So it was a throwaway. And I guess I didn't adequately explain that you know that <laughs> I wasn't really going to put a lot of effort into truing it up or anything because it was junk and uh, that and the fact that I couldn't find my, my aluminum hammer to, to move the you know the side pieces of it around uh, but I thought it was pretty good that just by eye and a, and a carpenter square that I got it within eight thousandths of true now when I used to do this for money when I turn them out you wouldn't get any needle movement when I put it on the main bearing journal there. They were true, you know, and I never had one come back, so they must have been done right. But somehow this <laughs> didn't seem to, what I said didn't seem to get through to some people, I guess. So I'm, I'm going to work on trying to be more clear about things, which a lot of times I just think you auto, automatically think everybody knows that, you know. And of course they don't, so we'll work on it. Anyway today we're going to get busy and uh, try to build a gearbox. We get that done we'll move on to the next part of the project. If not well then that'll be next week's job you know. Uh, having said that let's just get on with it. Alright so I've laid out the approximate location of the gears. This will be the big gear and the little gear and uh, took a center drill and made a hole in each spot. This one, this hole is just going to be to push the gear through. This one will have the uh, shaft that the gear actually rides on and it will form the bearing for the shaft on this side. The other side will form a bearing for the shaft on the other side. Kind of primitive but uh, for a one time use I think it probably is good enough. So now I'll swap this out and put a three quarter end mill in here and cut right through there. That should make a very close to three quarter inch hole which will be just right for me to uh, put a three quarter inch shaft into. This could work out. I'll just drill a hole down through it. Then when I flip it over, I can't be off more than a few thousandths, probably. You notice I said probably, and that's a definite maybe. So let's just get on with it and see what we come out with. Thank you. 
looks like it went right through there so now I gotta get a, another bit because I want to make that about an inch size hole right there so the gear will just set through so you guys take a little nap while I find the other tools alright so it turns out that I, my memory as to the size of the, of the little gear is correct and it will slide up through there just like that and if the distance between the teeth, you know, to the to the big gear is correct, then uh, then I'm, you know, I've got the hole finished and it's in the right spot. But if it's not, I may have to make this hole bigger so that I can move the gear around a little bit and only get the right uh, the right amount of backlash on the teeth. And it may not be that super important, you know. Like I say, it's a one-time use, but I don't want it to be so misaligned that it breaks or binds or anything, you know? Alright, you guys take a little nap. Alright, so I forgot to turn on the camera. Anyway, this piece that used to be a, a shaft out of a cylinder boring machine, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It, uh, it fits the gear and it fits the gearbox hole both about the same kind of clearance it's not the best finish in the world but I guess it'll do <coughs> this thing's got a got a keyway there but I'm not going to try to cut a key in this thing it'll take me all the way <coughs> I have a keyway cutter and I can cut a key I'll think on that between now and tomorrow it's whether I want to got a keyway in there or not. That's a spot for a woodruff key right there. I doubt seriously that I'm going to do it. So I'm probably going to follow my original plan which is just to drill a hole right down through this guy down into here and uh, thread about the you know the last bottom part of it and put in a big old grub screw or maybe more than one depending. But since it's late and it's time to quit, I can think about this all night. So you guys take a good night's sleep, and I'll be right back. Well, you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men. Well, look at this. You see that shaft wobbling around? I forgot that I bent that motor shaft when I was trying to tighten up the belt in that last video I really wanted to use the same uh, the same wiper to compare the results so I don't know now I'm kinda of torn will I continue to use this wiper motor or I've got another one here that's, that doesn't have a bent shaft pretty sure it's not bent but it's not the same one uh, so there I am. I gotta figure out what to do. Alright, this is supposed to be a wonderful device for finding the center of something under your drill press. So, I guess we'll give it a try here. Not that way. I guess that looks like it's pointing toward the center. So now I'll get a uh, center drill and make a little start on it and drill a hole for the, the grub screw and thread it and that sort of thing and then we'll be one more step closer. And I drilled the hole to, for a quarter twenty and then I came back and I drilled it halfway down with a quarter inch so that I don't have to thread really all that much of it. I got a little tap magic for aluminum here. So it'll also work for aluminium if that's what you've got. Uh, yeah, I guess I should tighten it down. It makes sense. Alright. Back to it.
All right, so I'll finish tapping this and then we'll drill a hole in the uh, shaft. I made a mark on the shaft right up here. Let's see if I roll it around. And just about that much over from the gear. And that's the way it fits together. So I'm just going to come down in here and pretty much mark the shaft. And then I'll to pull it out of the gear to do the actual uh, drilling. I have a terrible habit of putting drill bits in there and not, not tightening them down. That should uh, that should have left a nice little notch in the shaft, and that's good because it don't want to come off. <laughs> Got a little burr on it now. We'll make it work. There. So I've got a mark right there. I know where to, uh, to drill the little booger. So I'll drill that and I'll drill another little spot up on this end where I've got the other mark to put a cotter pin in so this thing doesn't wobble side to side. And we'll be that much closer to finished. Alright, so I've drilled all the necessary holes. And we've got this little keeper here holding the shaft tied up against this other side here and I've got the gear is uh, got a grub screw in it and let me see if I can make a stop on it there got a grub screw in there to hold it good and steady got a hole in the shaft back up in there to put the cable through so all the hole drilling is finished now it's time for me to make a uh, a support for this thing so I can run the cable down through the bottom like that and we will see how much that this thing can lift using gears. I uh, have to apologize for the fact that that shaft is a little bit bent but I forgot about that. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got one of these little loop things here that you use to fasten cables with. I'm going to put one end through there, go around the, the shaft and put the other end in there and try to squeeze it down tight enough to hold everything together. If I get ambitious I might uh, I might even put a little drop of solder on it. I don't know. I'll think about that. I dropped that thing a minute ago, cut my finger trying to catch it. I don't know why it wants to fall off there. I guess because the motor's got it over overbalanced. All right, so you guys, you're taking another nap while I try to squeeze this end onto the cable. All right, so I'm not a rigger, so I don't know really how to get hold of things. I tried flaring out the end of that cable and melting some solder in it, and I got it wrapped on there. I don't know if it's going to hold or at some point just come undone, but I've got it right down through the table of the drill press down to this platform. Now I don't know how much weight that I've got on there. I can't find my scale so I've got to go buy one. That's the only thing I can think of. I'm going to get me a cheap bathroom scale and I'll come back and I'll find out how much that weighs and then from there we'll move on up to uh, you know add some weighing it before we add it on. Sorry about all the camera moving. Alright, the last video seems to me like we stopped around 120 or 130 pounds. I'll look that up when I'm editing and add it in. So I'm going to start here with 115 pounds and add the stuff on. There's no use in, uh, you know, building up to, to 100 and something. So anyway, there's the first 110 pounds right there and I'm going to say that the uh, platform there weighs about five pounds so we've got 115 on it right now okay i'm gonna add on another 22 pounds <coughs> let her down see if it'll pick it back up Alright, 
picked it up. So we'll go get another. Another one of these metal plates. Put it back down again. Right back with another one. job those gears have made it a lot stronger than uh, than using that belt so who knows how far we're going to get all right let's, uh, let's set her back down on the floor So I still got to go get another one, don't I? All right, you take a nap while I get another one. All right, so I went and got another camera. So that, that dang it, I don't break it. card on both of them and if I don't lose a camera I'll be lucky I guess but anyway <clears throat> there's the camera watching the gears and the camera watching the uh, the lift so let's see if I can pick this up there's another 20 pounds we're now at 215 pounds let's see if it'll come up or dump it out or whatever You're up a full six inches there, and it's gradually letting itself back down because the friction in the motor can't hold that weight. All right, so we'll go get another 20 pounds. Let's see if we can get about six or eight more of these. Sure, you can't handle that. Let's see if we can get another 20 pounds. All right, there's another 20 pounds. takes us to 235 pounds. Alright, that's the last one I had. I thought I had six or eight more, but there was wood underneath it. You told me. 
Well, let's find something else heavy and bring it over here. Okay, that fine piece weighed out 35 pounds. Oh, man. Ah, ah. That weighs 290 pounds. I know this is going to fall off and break my toes or something. Are you guys betting on whether the old geezer survives? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Well, that didn't work too good. Gotta reposition it somehow. What's happening is the switch over here, the switch is getting hotter than a pistol. I'll show you this, what I mean by the switch. This is the, the on off reverse switch. Alright, let's see if this is the on off switch. It's getting plenty darn hot. The wires there, right by it, are getting hot. <sighs> this guy doesn't feel hot. This guy doesn't feel hot. These wires got some temperature to them, not much. So, all right, so it's not hot anywhere, but mainly here. And, and maybe that wire down there where it heads to the motor and back. I don't guarantee they're hot. This guy's got a little cooling fan and he doesn't seem to be giving off any heat. But then again, the cooling fan doesn't seem to be running either, so maybe it only starts when it gets hot. Oh, okay guys, I know you want me to go on and on and on, so you're going to have to take a nap while I go find more metal. Okay, there's another pin. That brings 240 pounds. I mean, had to write it down. 340 pounds. I'm sorry. That's 340 pounds. Let's see what happens. I think, folks, well, whatever happens, I'm not picking this up tonight. Can't hold all that. It's, it's letting it all the way down. Whoa! Don't pick it 
Don't do it. All right, guys, I'm, I'm calling the part of the safety officer here and putting a stop to this right now before it kills me. Um, I'll think about it tonight as to whether I'm going to re-rig the thing and start over with all this weight and see how much further to go. I'm almost certain I will, but you guys go to sleep for your brief second that you're asleep, and I'm going to go and take the video out of the camera and put it all together as much as I can and think about what to do next. All right, this is two days later. <laughs> We're already down to Wednesday. I had to go and do some uh, work some other place. And so I didn't get back to this until today, but I've got two cameras set up, one watching the gears, and this one's gonna be watching the, uh, the weight down at the bottom. And we're going to try it all over again. All right, two cameras recording, so that ought to that ought to do the job. Okay. So the last uh, the last count I had was 340 pounds. I rearranged it all here, and let's see if it's balanced before we get more weight. It's not balanced. Okay. Old geezer's got to try again. Be right back. Okay, we know it left 340 pounds. We've demonstrated that. So, I'll lift it one more time. You see it's swinging free. So, I'm going to add another 10 pounds to it, which means I guess I'll stack the lead weights back on there. This whole thing is, is harder to break than I had thought, so, <laughs> oh well. I'll throw the lead weights and some of them up inside, and some of them over here. Yes, maybe that'll kind of possibly level it out. That's another 10 pounds. So now we're at 350. I'm going to write it down so I don't forget. All right, here we go. Swinging free. That means it lifted it. It's getting a little hot, the switch is. What I do is I turn up the speed control on that little rheostats, what I used to call them, variable resistor, whatever. And that adds more voltage to the motor and that makes it keep picking it up even though the last time around it didn't want to, if you see what I mean. All right, so. Let me go find more weight because the adding it 10 pounds didn't stop it. Okay, I just put another 10 pounds on there. It's this big piece of steel that I, I guess is some of that 10L41, whatever it is that cost me a fortune. Uh, let's see if it pick it up. Tell the fact that it's swinging back and forth that, but it picked it up. Okay, so I gotta find more weight still. I'm beginning to think the thing's never gonna give away. Maybe it, maybe it'll have to pick up a Buick or something, or a Mercedes. Okay, I put two more pieces in there. Together they weigh another 10 pounds. That makes it uh, 300 and 370 pounds. 
Let's see what happens. So there you are. He had picked it up, you could see with the fact that it turned around in, in mid-air there. This is starting to get kind of rough. I'm running out of room to put metal. Okay, I'll go get something else extra yet. Okay, I added another 10 pounds of lead muffins. Let's see if we can get it off the ground. Oh, by the way, that's 400 pounds now. Well, I'm certainly impressed. I don't know about you. That's 400 pounds. Looks like I'm going to have to go get another 10 pounds of muffins. You guys are going to have to send me some kind of deodorant or something for all this sweating I've done. Okay, we're at 440 pounds. I don't know how I can keep on, but here we are. That switch is warming up pretty good. If I had to lift it more than the couple of inches that I can there, we would probably have some kind of failure. Oh well, running you know from the switch, probably melt that switch down. And you get another 10 pounds, surely it's gonna break sooner or later. Alright, I've only got two more lead muffins left. And then I have to go to the the big bars, I think they're four or five pounds. I don't know. I'll have to weigh one. But maybe we won't have to get there. This is 460 pounds. And I keep writing it down over there. But anyway, 460 pounds. Which gets really hot doing that. Well, let's try another 10 pounds, I guess. I have to weigh the, the ingots to see what they weigh. Okay, two lead muffins and three of these bars is 10 pounds. So, there we are. That brings us to 470 pounds. Let's see if we can do it. Well, there you go. I think that's the limit. But it's really getting the hit the switch is really getting hot I'm gonna do it one more time on this let's see what, what I can see all right that's the end of it it stalled out there that's all it can lift, 470 pounds. I, uh, I guess if you had uh, a larger power supply, it might do even more. The motor feels pretty warm, not hot, but warm. Of course, that's that's the case. I imagine down in there where the motor's that's hotter than a piston. All right, folks, you saw it right here in River City, or right here in Texas, anyway. 470 pounds lifted with a wiper motor. It just give out of out of power. It didn't break anything. Well, it seems that uh, Bubba's got a cousin named of Billy, and uh, Billy Joe actually, and uh, Billy Joe's got a brother named of Bubba, 
and his brother ain't known for being real sensitive or anything, you know. So anyway, Billy Joe wanted to go off to Europe, you know, and do a little looking around, and he couldn't find nobody to keep his dog except Bubba, and he really hated to do that, but, you know, he he decided, well, there wasn't no other choice to it, so he told Bubba, he says, I'm going to call you from time to time and ask you about how the dog's getting on. He says, you better take good care of him. So Bubba says, all right. So in a few days, well, Billy Joe calls up, says, uh, well, Bubba, he says, just how's my dog doing? Bubba says, oh, your dog's dead. Billy Joe says, oh, Bubba, he says, you know, he says, you know how much I, I like that dog, how I love that dog and, and all that. He says, how could you be so insensitive as to just, just pop out with it that he's dead? He says, you know, he said, you could have done a lot of things. He should, says, you could have let me into it easy, like telling me, well, the dog's on the roof and, and uh, we can't get him down, but we're working on it. And, and when I call back tomorrow to check on the dog, you see, well, the dog fell off the roof and, and, and we took him to the vet. And then maybe the next day you say, well, your dog died, you know, and, and that take, you know, give me time to start expecting something. He says, you, he says, Bubba, you got to learn to be more sensitive. Bubba says, all right. He says, Betty Joe, I'll sure give it a try. So after a few days, Betty Joe's feeling a little bit better, you know, and he called back home. And he says, well, Bubba, he says, how's everything going? Bubba says, it's going all right. He says, well, he says, how's Mama? Bubba said, well, he says, she's up on the roof. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber leave a comment if you got something to say and above all remember keep on keeping on bye now